Hi. Hi. Um, sitting here with uh, Andrew Peters to talk a bit about Reconciliation Week uh, this week. So um, I think what we'd most like to hear about is um, we talk a lot about um, reconciliation as a country, but what what does reconciliation mean? I think on a more local level for for you, for your family, and for perhaps the Yarra Rangers. Do you think? Generally, Loz, I think it's it's about acceptance and understanding. Um, so, from a really personal level, it's uh, it's been easy for me in my job and my upbringing in Hillsville to feel accepted by people for being who I am, you know, both as a, as a person and as an Aboriginal person as well. So it's, that's been easy for me. And what I'd like to do through things like Reconciliation Week, <laughs> what I'd like to do through Reconciliation Week is make sure the world's a place where my boys can grow up feeling that as well. Um, it's different for them, you know, they're probably a little lighter skinned than I am, although they're kind of darkening up as they get older. So, um, but they're very proud of who they are. Yeah. In primary school, I was never outwardly proud of who I was as an Aboriginal person until mum started working there when I was in grade six. So it was not something that I hid from people, yeah. but it certainly wasn't anything that I told people about, whereas my boys feel yeah. comfortable doing that. So for me, Reconciliation Week, and then the local events are really important in that because it gives, and I don't like to use the term ordinary Australians, but it gives everyday Australians who aren't you know, involved in it with work or yeah. don't have to do it, to, a chance to sort of engage with people that they know in their community, like-minded people, and see what can be possible, learn about some local history perhaps, yeah. and just find, for me it's about people getting finding and identifying their own connections yeah. to Indigenous culture and how that might happen. For me, obviously, it's easy as an Aboriginal person, I've got a family history. But for a lot of white fellas, it can be difficult because they feel disconnected from it. Yeah. So for me, it's a way, you know, having events, local events too, is a way for people to sort of start that journey of connection, I think. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, I think one of the big questions, I, I wrote down a few questions that I think are really important for people to understand um, and get a different perspective on. Um, if Australia achieves all that it's set out to in terms of reconciliation, what does that look like? Yeah, I don't think that's possible because yeah. we haven't identified what that is. So yeah. For me, you know, I'm a lecturer in Indigenous Studies at Swinburne Uni, for me, full acceptance would be that job's redundant. Yeah. You don't need someone teaching about the culture because yeah. everybody learns about it at school and knows about it and everybody accepts it and understands it. So, you know, that is extremely unlikely, you know, at least in my lifetime, if yeah, not in my kids' so. lifetime as well. Um, but to me, one of the problems I have with the, the phrase reconciliation too and the whole the government process is that none of those things were really identified when the process began. Yeah, okay. And probably rightly so. It's an evolving and an organic concept, I think, that we're changing all the time. And the more people that become aware of Aboriginal culture, the more the goalposts shift and the more we need to learn. And, mm. um, but for me, that would probably explain what true reconciliation is, is that we don't, we don't any longer have to teach people about what Indigenous culture is in this country and what it means and, yeah. and why it's important. Yeah. So, yes, I don't know if we'll ever get there, but that... That's the ultimate. I That's guess, the ultimate. Yeah. yeah. For for Anchor as a as a community services organisation, um, like a lot of community services organisations, we are all trying to work towards uh, developing our own reconciliation action plan. And part of what we're trying to do is figure out what that means for us on an individual level. Um, what sort of advice or what sort of direction could you provide, Anchor? moving through this process well it's sort of not a not a matter of just you know say read this and you'll you'll have it yeah it, it's an individual thing and i've been involved in a couple of reconciliation action plans particularly the one at swinburne i'm really proud of that we're, one of, we're the first university to get elevate status in australia yep. yep um but it was a long journey and it was all about engagement so for us as a large organization it was about getting 
really senior managers on board and getting them to understand why this is important. Um, it wouldn't have happened without the vice chancellor helping to drive it. She was phenomenal in all of that, and, and of course, by her compelling others to do it, they did it, yeah. and it became possible. But it's about, I guess, my advice to the organisation would be identify what the organisational goals are about a reconciliation action plan. What do you want to achieve? Yep. Is it to amend the operations, to change the operations of the organisation itself? Is it to change the attitude of staff? Is it to create something within the staff, you know, a different culture or, or is, it, is it about culture at all? All of those yeah. sort of questions, I think, from an organisational level, to identify what you think or what anchors should be doing or what they want to achieve from a reconciliation action plan. And from that, you can get individual people to look at it and buy into the level that they want. Yeah, brilliant. So I suggested to a lot of Swinburne staff too, this isn't, this reconciliation action plan will mean different things to different people. Some of you will get really engaged with it and it yep. may very well shape your daily behaviours at work. For others, it might change one thing that you do per year. Yeah. But it's about understanding what it's trying to achieve and then finding everyone's own individual way to engage with it, just like I ask people to engage with Indigenous culture. You know, find that little bit of history that, that relates to you and that you can relate to. Yeah. And I think once you do that, a really good reconciliation action plan will let staff do that for themselves and they jump on board after that. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. All right, thank you, Andrew. No worries. Cheers. Have fun.